Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Maddie Stream. I'm going to do your December the 8th, just for today, in a meditation. Hope you're doing well this morning. I made it to Iowa. I'm here in Iowa. It's early in the morning, and I'm able to record this podcast, so I'm very grateful. The title of the meditation is Calling a Defect a Defect. When we see how our defects exist in our lives and accept them, we can let go of them and get on with our new life. That comes from basic text, page 35. Sometimes our readiness to have our character defects removed depends on what we call them. If misnaming our defects makes them seem less defective, we may be able to see the damage they cause, rather be unable to see the damage that they cause. And if they seem to be causing no harm, why would we ever ask our higher power to remove them from our lives? Take people pleasing, for example. Doesn't really sound all that bad, does it? It just means we're nice to people, right? Not quite. To put it bluntly, it means we're dishonest and manipulative. We lie about our feelings, our beliefs, and our needs trying to soothe others into compliance with our wishes. Or perhaps we think we're easygoing. But does easygoing meaning mean rather we ignore our housework, avoid confrontations, and stay put in a comfortable rut then a better name for it would be laziness or procrastination or fear. Many of us have trouble identifying our character defects. If this is the case for us, we can talk with our sponsor or our NA friends. We clearly and honestly describe our behavior to them and ask for them, their help in identifying our defects. As time passes, we become progressively better able to identify our own character defects, calling them by their true names. Just for today, I will call my defects by their true names. If I have trouble doing this, I will ask my sponsor for help. How beautiful. That's a beautiful meditation. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. Please and thank you. Wow, what a beautiful meditation, calling a defect a defect. I like the point that it makes, that when I see how defects exist in my life and accept them, we can let go of them and get on with our new life. I like that. Sometimes I think character defects that we have, they're allowed to exist, they're allowed to continue because we haven't been honest about what they really are. We're trying to, in a sense, flip the script and make it seem more as a, you know, survival tactic, something that we use to get by. When in actuality, it's just a part of the game. It's just a part of our manipulative self. And so sometimes it does take asking a sponsor, this is what I do. 
What do you think about it? Or someone else in the your network, trusted network of Narcotics Anonymous. This is what I do, being honest, all the time. Or this is what I do when such and such happens. What do you think about that? What character defect comes to your mind after having told you a scenario that I often find myself in? And they just say, you think that's people pleasing? Okay. Well, actually, you're being dishonest and manipulative. You hide how you really feel. You carry on in a certain way, allowing people to think that you're supportive of them in some kind of way. And then you run behind their back and you dog them because you're actually... You actually think what they're doing is wrong. But you don't know how to speak up for yourself or you won't. That's dishonest and it's manipulative. That's that's just one way that sometimes we misuse people pleasing. No, I'm a people pleaser. I know it. I know you're dishonest and manipulative. Do you know that? Because when you know the truth about that, and accept that that's really what you've been doing. You're probably more apt to carry out this quote. Let go of it. And get on with your new life. I thought God was supposed to remove the shortcomings. I thought I was just supposed to be entirely ready. That's the whole point. In order to be entirely ready... Step six, to have these character defects removed from you, you need to know that they're there. You need to acknowledge what they actually are and not sugarcoat it. Stop sugarcoating what it really is. Because the longer you make it seem syrupy sweet, right, syrupy sweet, the longer you do that, the less likely you'll feel the urgency to be entirely ready to get rid of it. <laughs> What's wrong with pleasing people? It's okay to think about other people. I mean, that's what I would tell myself. People please. What's wrong with that? That's okay to want to make other people comfortable. Until a situation goes down and they find out that you don't want to maybe even like them to don't support them. You you think what they're doing is actually a problem or that they're hurting you in some kind of way and you won't speak up. It's hard to be in a relationship with a people pleaser because you never know when their truth is going to stand up and make itself known. And then you are the one that took advantage of them right so that's just one example how about this word easy going i'm just so easy going i'm laid back what does that mean even you're easy going you don't clean your house you avoid confrontation because it's just too much for you what does that mean it could mean that you actually have a character be defect called fear that won't allow you to have a conversation. It's the same thing, right? Confrontation is the same thing. It's a hard word to describe the need or the act of having a conversation with someone about a certain situation where you feel a need to express how you feel. It's just a conversation. It's not death. <laughs> it's not the walling. You're standing there in front of a firing squad. You're not the firing squad. No, you're not the blinded prisoner. You're recovering at it. And you can call it confrontation, so you can just say, I need to have a conversation, or I need to talk with you. 
and clarify some things. Instead of, I need to talk to you and get some things straight. Listen, let me, let, we need to talk. See, a lot of times, it's the way we're approaching it. That makes people not want to be bothered or because we think we have to be so hard, we might avoid confrontation. But it really is rested in the defect of fear. It's not being easy going. Same thing with the house, not cleaning, taking care of things behind yourself. Things are backing up because you won't do laundry. That's uh, laziness, right? If it's not related to your health, it's laziness. And you have the means to do the laundry and you won't do it? Yeah. So... Again, the way we're looking at words and the way that we phrase them can help us determine how entirely ready we are to have them removed. So today, let's call our defects by their true names. And if we can't do that, let's just ask our sponsor, someone we trust for help. What do you think about this? Do you think this is people pleasing or do you think this is me being dishonest and manipulating? Just ask the question. It's not the end of the world if they do think you're dishonest and manipulating. It's not the end of the world. I think, again, it comes down to assigning value to situations and overvaluing one situation versus another placing way too much emphasis on our being embarrassed or hurt if someone tells us the truth instead of being appreciative that you finally heard the truth and that they were the ones that were willing to give you the truth so that you could grow. You see, again, just how we phrase things and what value we assign. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you. Mm -hmm. I hope you assign a lot of value to your day to day. It means everything to me to spend time with you guys to do the podcast. It means everything to me. And everything in the sense that it's just highly important to me. So I make sure I do it. I assign a lot of value to doing the meditation with you. And it makes my day greater. It makes it better. Today, I want you to assign a lot of value to having a beautiful day on purpose, no matter what. No matter what. Confrontations, conversations, uncomfortability, enjoyment, whatever it is. Make it up in your mind to assign the proper value to it. And you will. You will have a beautiful day and it will be intentional. So that means that it is on purpose and you can't miss. You're worth it. You're worth it. So work it. <laughs> Talk to you soon.